How was it, the game? It was pretty good, yeah. Uh, she plays, I have to say, Jacqueline, uh, Christian. I don't Did know, you know if her? I... I watched yeah, it's, her... It's Jacqueline. Like Jacqueline, yeah, I thought so. I, I'm like Americanized. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline, yeah. I watched her actually last week. She had a really good win in Belgrade in the first round. She beat Kaya Yuvan. So um, so I watched that match a little bit, so I was prepared. I think it, it was good that I was ready for, you know, a tough battle. Because sometimes you play these unknown players who are great players and you expect it to be easy. And that's when you get in trouble if you expect things to be easy or... So, but I was, um, I was well prepared. I knew that she can play. So actually everyone can play nowadays. There is no difference. Actually, yeah. The, the, I mean, in women's tennis, there's a lot of mixed, well, playing styles. Mm -hmm. So you don't really know what to expect. I mean, this is why we have so many Roland Garros winners yeah. nowadays. Well, it's really <laughs> nice to see the, that the um, women's tennis, the younger players who are coming up, have all really different game styles. If you think about Iga Swiatek, who plays a lot of spin, or of course Naomi Osaka, who hits the ball very hard, but then uh, Krejcikova, who now won the French Open, she can play slice and good volley. So you have all these different uh, game styles, and it's really nice and exciting. Krejcikova, yeah, she's a, she's a real talent coming from doubles, actually. Did you have to you used to play with her? I played at Wimbledon. I lost the second round in Wimbledon to her, and um, and you know what was really amazing? She adapted so quickly. She won the French Open, and I watched almost all her games. And she was playing like a lot of spin and opening the court, and yeah, and like serving a lot of kick serves, and then because of the schedule, because the French Open were moved, she didn't have so much time to um, play on grass because yeah. she was so long in Paris. And I played her and she was playing pure grass court tennis, you know, serving slices, playing slices, flattening her ball. And I had my chances, it was really close. I lost 7-5, 6-4, but I was really impressed with that, I think. Not that she's an obviously amazing player, but just how quickly she was able to adapt her game to a completely different surface. Actually, as Romanians, we lived through this kind of stuff when Simona oh, yeah, exactly. won the Wimbledon being a, a Do you know player? that I yeah. was watching with my coach, second round she played Buzarnescu, yeah, another that, Romanian. Yeah. That was the only match where she lost a set. A set, exactly. Yeah. And she lost the second set and then she started playing. She went to the bathroom, she came back, she started playing. She was zoning so hard because right, yeah. Buzarnescu was playing actually really, really well and she had no chance and I turned to my coach and he can vouch for me and I said, oh my God, I think Halep's going to win Wimbledon. That he was, was second like, round. That was second round. He was right, like, no, yeah. no way. She's better clay court player. I'm like, I can see it in her because Simona gets this a thing here when she looks like this really, really yes i'm telling you because i played so many times oh where she's her. in the zone actually and going into the yeah her face changes and she's in the zone and she doesn't get angry anymore she doesn't she just goes point by point by point and she won in the end my coach i was of course not there anymore <laughs> wimbledon is not really my <laughs> my best tournament i read a book about it <laughs> <laughs> so you know why yeah but my coach called me and he was like, I can't believe you called Simona Halep as a champion in the second round. I'm like, well, I saw it in her face. It wasn't like uh, God gave me a sign. It was in her face. She just changed her. Because yeah. the only thing, she sometimes gets so angry, you know? I don't know. When well, it's hard. and She knows that. She knows that. It's, we all have to deal with our emotions and we all have our things. But there she just managed the stress levels because she was... You know, she lost the second set to a, a girl that's from her country. That's a lot of stress for a tennis player. Yeah, yeah, and that, uh, I mean, that because Michaela also wanted to win the exactly. game and maybe to, 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 to show that she's a good player yeah. because she was coming back from an injury. Yes, exactly. And then, yeah. No, that was amazing to watch because she handled it so well and then she went on to win it. So 
But what I actually want to say is that I called it and I'm always right and I'm amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's the idea. That's and the, actually the gist of the story yeah. that I wanted to say. How are you, Andrew? I'm uh, doing Andrea, really well. Actually, it's Andrea. We talked about yesterday. Yes. It's Andrea as in Romanian. Andrea, exactly. Andrea, yeah. But, you know, in um, America, they often ask me, like, is it Andrea or Andrea? I'm like, well, technically it's Andrea. Andrea with R. Yes, with, yeah. but I mean, you can call me. They don't know. That. Whatever they you don't can know, call they don't me. Have the letter, no, the they don't have the sound, right. so I'm like, you can call me Jennifer for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really maybe if to. if you will win the U.S. Open, uh, yeah, you can call me whatever you want. <laughs> if I win the U.S. Open, you can call me Jennifer. You can call me Brad or Jared. <laughs> um, by the way, talking about the book. Um, when did you write it? <laughs> I wrote it in between practices and after matches. Not in the pandemic, as it looks like, no, because it's no. now out in Romania. Romania being the second country mm -hmm. or something like that? Yes, Am I second, right? The second country, yeah. yeah Romania is the good. first translation in a different... I, I've translated the book into English myself. Right. Um, and my publishing house is looking for a literary publishing house because they want to position me also as a literary writer, not just as an athlete who wrote a book, which is really nice that they believe in me. So you're a writer that plays tennis, not a tennis for player them, that writes. You know, for them, okay. I'm a writer that plays tennis and I feel like a tennis player who also writes, you know, that's okay. the different kind. Of, and I, I appreciate they believe in me, but I myself, I view myself still more as a tennis player. So it's hard for me now to keep the discipline and keep writing and um, and do all the things they expect of a writer, of a proper writer who writes. You know? Well, yeah, that's not the job, actually, you know. Yes, exactly. It's, it's a full time like, job it's for, exactly, for some. I mean, you know it. It's just the same like tennis. The more you write, the better you get at it. You found find nuances in places where you didn't see them before. Mm -hmm. um, it becomes more you find the zone of writing much more quicker I think that's the biggest difference when I was writing the book I made a schedule and I played every, I wrote every day for at least two hours so I would get my schedule of a match or my practice and then I would plan okay five to seven tomorrow I'm sitting down and write and I mean as you know writing is sometimes just editing you know, of course yeah I know I know, I know I know I know I know thinking what did I do here why yeah. did I do it so it wasn't always like strictly writing but two hours I would spend on my books every day and uh, and then I realized after a few weeks how much easier it was for me to get in this space that you need where it's like you're calm and you're focused but you're still relaxed I think that's when you write the best and funnily enough that's also when you play the best but yeah it's, yeah this is what I was about to ask you actually um when did the title come into your mind because it's a bit dark it is a i mean uh, dark. literally <laughs> <laughs> both yes literally and metaphorically um so i had three suggestions i wanted so the first i don't know if in the romanian version they have also the quotes of uh the songs that they i picked everything. okay good yeah, yeah. yeah. so at first I wanted to have a play on words on the Bayaga song um, that I have in the very front of the book. He's a very famous lyricist from Serbia. His uh, texts, he, he's a singer-songwriter, but his, his texts are really beautiful and he really captures things about life. And I wanted to have a play on words with that, but it was too complicated to translate Serbian into, into German. Then my other choice was Finite Jest, because of Infinite Jest oh, from David cool. Foster Wallace. Um, infinite you jest. You have a thing with this guy. Yes, exactly. And Infinite Jest basically means never ending fun. And I wanted it to be ending fun because okay. normally it ends. The fun of tennis ends. Yeah. But sometimes. my publishing, I love that title, but my publishing house didn't like it so much because they thought people will think it's a book about David Foster Wallace. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it could have And then this title between fame and glory or between, um, yeah, fame and glory lies the night was just like, it came to me. Uh, I, to be honest, I, in the beginning, I just thought it sounded really nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it sounds nice. In Romania, it was translated with darkness uh, mm -hmm. instead, instead of, of night, night yeah. which is pretty much 
metaphorically speaking but but it's the same yeah i mean this the 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 thing is there i mean if you yes. read the book by the way if you've heard if you if you don't know much if you don't know much about andrea <laughs> you will know when we're reading the book why she's talking about serbian things yes so, yes. so yeah. my parents i mean yeah the name so. can be the name can be relevant the but name, uh, I yeah think, i think people in romania will recognize you know petkovic that it's maybe serbian or yugoslavian back then back in the days um, but yeah my parents are both um, they flew flew the before the war they came to germany then the war broke out so um, it was planned that we go back to um, what was back then yugoslavia Uh, but then we stayed in Germany, so it changed my life, my parents' life, and um, I think it's part also of my um, of my story in a way. It's a part that when I'm, I was watching the Olympics now, and it made me sad because I will never have that strong feeling of belonging to just one country. I'm okay. very proud to play for Germany and to play Fed Cups, and I was at the Olympic Games and. It's really strong feelings, but when I see Serbia, I also have strong feelings. You know what? This we, we also have this thing with Bianca Andreescu. Ah, yeah. But that's true, Bianca. I'm sure because she, I can see in her, she has a lot of Romanian mentality in her. Oh, really? What oh. What does that mean, a Romanian mentality? Well, t for us, you know, the thing is. Um, I obviously don't know Romania that well to now of speak course. of a Romanian mentality. But you know but the players. Exactly. And for us, it was always, when I was young, I think you think more simplified when you're young. So, and you don't know all the players. Back when I started playing, there was no internet. You couldn't look of up course. the others. Yeah. So it was like you looked at the country. And I know when on in Europe, on clay, when you played an American, you were like, oh my God, that's the best draw that's ever. <laughs> You know, yeah. they came from America, they never played on clay, they don't know how to slide, they fall on their face after two games, you're like, yes. <laughs> and then when you played uh, Russians, you would be like, oh man, that's going to be tough. They're going to yell a lot, they're going to try and, you know, throw you off your game. They always yelled? They, uh, they all the Russians yelled. were always, yeah, you know, oh, okay. I mean, this is very simplified, but that's how we felt. Yeah, and then when you played Romanians, you always knew they were super crafty. They always had strong women's tennis players, always. Like, you you know, when the girls were from Romania, they have just a strong uh, women's tennis game. I don't know why. Maybe you can explain it to me. I We don't really know why, because we, we used to say here that we really don't have a system. Yeah, it's funny, huh? So, but, but they just came out, and this generation of players, with Simona, of mm -hmm. course, uh, as a spearhead, Uh, was really and is really really magnificent and we are uh, you talked about Jacqueline mm -hmm. so she's the newcomer yes. she's the, she's the she's our new gen okay. let's put it like this nice. and we just hope that she and I guess you know Gabi Ruse you played yes like, I play she plays really well you as played well the final in Hamburg. I lost in the finals yeah to her <laughs> yeah, we've seen it. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you were getting mad about the point there. At the, at oh yeah, the there was set. one point. Yeah, exactly. The umpire, in my opinion, screwed up. But we're <laughs> always, in my opinion, you know, it's like we're always caught in our our own world. Although I do think I was right. Just, oh, of <laughs> but we always think we are right. No, but um, yeah, it was just always. I don't know. Maybe it's the competition, and then. You know, it makes it makes the girls really tough. And then for some reason, okay, Jacqueline today, and also for funnily enough, Gabriela Russo, they don't play like this so much. Um, but normally, whenever you played Romanian players, you knew they can play a drop shot. They are most of the time really good athletes. They can run a lot of balls down. They will fight until the last point. They will die on court before they give you anything. And um, And so I see a lot of these things in Bianca. So it doesn't surprise me All that right, she right. has Romanian roots just strictly from a tennis background point She's of, just of growing up. Heart. Yes, that's weird. That's the only yeah, thing well. that's strange. And I, by the way, we you you asked me about the generation of girls. Uh, when Simona won the Wimbledon, we had like s some interesting uh, talks about it because we in Romania we don't have a grass court. Really? No, so <laughs> so she just played. I, nobody knows how, 
but I guess it's just in her DNA or something. Well, I think my theory is just because she's the best no, mover. No, I mean, it's just on... because you said she's... Because I said it, it exactly. That's the That's not the <laughs> theory. That's the reality. But the theory... Uh, no, she's just um, the best mover on tour by far. And on grass, the biggest trouble that I also have as a tall girl is to move properly, you okay. know. And then when you feel a little uncertain on your legs, you start to not really hit through the ball and I think both Angie Kerber who also won Wimbledon um, my German friend and uh, Simona Halep are probably the top two movers on the WTA tour okay. right now I would I would say from from my experience of how many balls they can get back and how intense they are on on court um, yeah maybe uh, Wozniacki was like this before but she's she's retired she was a wall yes yeah, we used to right. call her Wozniacki oh, really? yeah. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> I like the word the uh, word play yeah so um, let me ask you one thing mm -hmm. in tennis we know that um, there are three main components of of the I mean of the game of every player mm -hmm. uh, technical talent whatever mm -hmm. mental and physical so and emotional <laughs> well, that's, about mental, that's mental so. yeah give me the percentages in your game of each of these three Components, elements yeah so i think um i would give my my physical and my technique a 50 percent i think right. i play pretty clean my surf always could you can use a little work thankfully once i got older I was much more courageous of actually going there and working on it and trying new things and I've gotten my serve up to be able to serve 175, 180 sometimes which I wasn't able to do before. So um, that's been something that I've really developed over the last past few years. Um, and then I'm like pretty clean in my strokes and I'm pretty good physics wise like I'm strong I'm dynamic I'm not the fastest player on court but I'm intense I can go long and hard and every, all of that is okay now the thing is with tennis what is so interesting all of this can go away in one second if your mentality is not there and so um, you can be in practice you can be a world champion if you can't bring a certain calm confidence into the matches none of this is anything is not worth it at all and so finding this balance of being calm and confident yet intense and and uh, dynamic is really 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 hard and it's just a daily struggle i think it's something that you have to fight for each and every day and the moment last week i had it in belgrade one day where i was a little off i was tired it was really hot and I couldn't control myself and my physical and my technique was gone in a minute. I surfed double falls, I couldn't run balls down anymore. So all of this, what I think I have as a pretty good basis and as a solid base was gone just because my mentality wasn't there. So it's so interesting how these two things impact each other and I think in team sports you can rely on your teammates to take some of the stress away from you so it may be the mentality part is important but you can cheat around it cheat. you know oh, yeah, <laughs> you can cheat word. you can be like oh, i'm really nervous but for 20 minutes i'm just going to stay on my position okay. and not try any crazy things and then once the nerves are gone that's that could be called self-control actually maybe I yes mean, uh, different level of self -control. yeah that's true also in tennis if you try to stay on your position for 20 minutes you're down a set and a break and then good oh, luck right. trying to come back yeah well if that. you're not Djokovic yeah yes, exactly. <laughs> if you're Djokovic you can uh, how do you relate to these three guys by the way um so I relate to them in like I can see Rafa was always my favorite I think he's amazing and in a way where I think I can never be like him this like incredible self-control and discipline and always being such a great sportsman and then um, with Roger what I can never be is this cool and relaxed and I'm more of an elegant yes I'm more of an intense type yeah. of person yeah I cannot be relaxed I, I remember <laughs> one time one coach told told me I was playing a bigger match and uh, I think in Stuttgart I had a wild card at the Porsche Cup and he was like just enjoy 
I was like, enjoy? Yeah, Are you bad. kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather not enjoy and win than enjoy. <laughs> what is? What are you talking about? Yeah, this I mean, is not. not en- I'm not park, enjoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was so angry at him that he told me, oh, just go out there and enjoy. I was so angry. But so I'm not that type. I think Roger is. Re- and I, there are people like this. There are players. If you tell them, just go out there and enjoy. They will play their best tennis. Like Kyrgios, you know, he needs to enjoy. Well, yeah, he's just enjoying everything. Exactly. Yeah, Sometimes he's enjoying a little too a little much. Too much yeah. <laughs> but there's a, there are just different types of players. And I'm definitely not the type of player, if you tell me to enjoy, that I will enjoy at all. And then with Djokovic, I identify a lot um, because of the yeah, mentality. mentality. I think I have a lot of his we can see this. anger in me as well. You know what? You, actually, when I, in my opinion, you're one of the girls that physically really is a Djokovic type. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> I in, a, in a good a way, of course. Yeah. yeah, in a good way. Because you're really athletic. Yeah. You know, you, when, you see, when I see you in the court, I know that's a tennis player. Mm. And that's a powerful tennis player. Mm. So, uh, And uh, some questions about this car. Yes. Did you get the chance to drive this, the Taycan? I did one time, yes. I was um, my... So we, as the German Fed Cup team, we would used to get um, Macans, Porsche Macans okay. to drive. And my Macan needed um, winter tires. So I left it with the, um, with the Porsche house in Darmstadt, where I live. <laughs> And they gave me the Taycan. It was brand new back oh, then. Right. And it made me so scared because you can <laughs> accelerate like in an airplane, but you can't hear anything, right? If you could choose mm-hmm. between winning a Grand Slam and being number one WTA player, <sighs> what would you choose? It's so hard. I would have always, always, always said winning a Grand Slam. And then, um, I don't know if you read the interview of Karolina Pliskova last year, or last year, sorry, at, the, at Wimbledon, when she said um, that she, her being for eight straight years in the top 10 and most of those years in the top five, she sometimes thinks that's a bigger achievement than winning a slam. And I, had to, I have to say I agreed with her 100%. Being in tennis, being in, in the top, having been in the top 10, having been ranked outside the top, top 10, it really is much harder what she's done. To be there. To be there for eight straight yeah. years, not be injured, you know, take such good care of your body that you're injury free, um, keep the level of play. As I said, tennis is a year long sport. You play from January to November. We change surfaces. We play outside, we play inside, sometimes on the same day. <laughs> wow, yeah. You know, so it's really a crazy sport sometimes in that regard. In the same match. <laughs> <Yeah>, sometimes <laughs> in the same match, exactly. So it's really a crazy sport with all the different conditions that you have to adapt to. So um, I agree with her. I think it's much harder feat to do. I do think that in history, Grand Slam champions will go down and will be remembered more than somebody who has been on the top of the game. So if I could choose for the outside world, I would be a Grand Slam champion. But for inside, for me, (laughs) I would be number one because I know how hard it is and how consistent you must play to get there. And um, it's much, much harder to do. It's not saying that Grand Slam, winning a Grand Slam is not hard. Of course, it's super hard but um, but you know keeping the intensity and the level for two weeks compared to five years it's a difference you know actually I have a funny story about this because you know you will hear it now for, for the first time I okay guess. Uh, we also have this girl I think you've heard about her Simona <laughs> which was like 10 years in top 10 or something yeah, well, was, not and she, but she finished from five years she finished two three or one yeah. four years that's unbelievable and the funny thing is she is from a city in romania that's named constanta oh really yeah. that means yeah. consistency, consistency. <laughs> yeah so this that's unbelievable yeah. sometimes you know the names they have a power, certain power to it i guess but uh, this is also funny amazing. or not, she's there. So. And th- that's, that's why, and I think I wrote something on Twitter when she won her first Grand Slam because I really couldn't believe that people were still 
doubting her ability in any way when she had finished in the top three five years in a row coming from a country like Romania where you don't have the system like America has the USTA where you have fitness trainers and physios and from when you're 10 years old so this is incredible. she's actually self-built let's put it like yeah. this she's self-built and the generation is self-built I don't know how mm. hopefully they will keep continuing mm playing like this but uh, we don't know we will see I'm telling you it's also the competition because I was lucky enough to grow up in a generation with Angie Kerber, Julia Görges, Sabine Lisicki, Laura Siegemund and we've played each other it's funny we're still around now some of us and we've played each other when we were 12 years old already and we wanted to you know beat each other become better and that pushed us and I think if you're um, if you have the strong generation around you that pushes you to to continue to improve and become better and try new things I think that's that's really important to have and then once you have a role model like Simona or a breakthrough star then the little girls want to be like Simona and then you have you a next generation growing up on the courts in ah, really? Romania yeah. the clay courts of yes. course <laughs> on the clay courts in Romania there are lots of people that didn't play tennis all her their, all their lives mm. They are now playing, coming, and they don't know the moves. They, they're just having fun. Yeah. But that's a breakthrough because mm -hmm. you know what? Getting people to move, to, to like, I mean, getting people to take some sports and just play tennis mm -hmm. is absolutely perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a feat, actually. I think so, too, because, um, yeah, it's just a beautiful sport. And it teaches you so much about life. Yeah. If, you, if you're... About yourself. About yourself, exactly. If you're willing to listen to it and look at the dark side <laughs> of okay. yourself, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Well, you know it better. You've been through many things. So, nine WTA? Yeah. Yes, I was number nine. That was your peak, actually, mm -hmm. in, the, in the tour. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, the, the level of the play you've, you've bring this here is consistent. I mean, I'm coming, yes. It's, it's better and better, so yeah. I it's can a, it's you there. <laughs> I hope so, but you, you're right that I'm for the first year in a long time, and I think the pandemic helped me in recovering a few things that I had. I'm over 30, you know, I had a lot of things with my body that were issues. Uh, I had a surgery on my knee that I kept pushing back, but I finally was able to do it. I'm so glad I did it. Um, and now for the first time in maybe four years, I'm able to not only to play matches on a consistent level, but to train on a consistent level, which then translates into those matches that you have um, a good level every time or somewhat of a good level. And I think that that makes a huge difference. This um, the con just consistency in tennis is key if you can keep that up then the results will come eventually so hopefully my body my old horse body <laughs> keeps right. me happy I will always be thankful <laughs> uh, will we be playing the the hard season how is it how, how will how will it be for you well, how do you feel it will be for you I hope it will well that's gonna be a test I haven't played with my knee I've played Australia mm -hmm. but it was only two, three weeks You're and it held up. Cincinnati and US Open? Yes, Cincinnati, Chicago and US Open. So my uh, knee was was pretty good for Australia, but I haven't played a longer stretch like you play after clay. You have two, three months of hard courts. So I haven't uh, done that with my knee yet. Uh, so, uh, hopefully it will keep up. But normally, generally speaking, I love the hard courts. I yeah. love New York. I, I love mean, being there. Place, so. It fits my play exactly. So. If, as I said, the old horse still wants to jump and run, I'm happy to push it. <laughs> I can assure you the old horse is still here. So <laughs> that, so Come on! Yeah, yeah, everything will be fine. Thank you so much. Okay.